Hi, and welcome to the May 2022 gathering. My name is Jim Bennett, and joining me today is Kelly Fahrenbaugh. Thanks for joining us as we share the self-review, essential elements of a person-centered Ohio ISP. Several years ago, DODD shared the seven essential elements for person-centered planning, as well as a companion document, which was a self-review based on these seven elements. In 2021, we revised from seven essential elements into six. We have heard lots of feedback that the self-review should be updated as well. So today we're going to share it with you. If you haven't already, download a copy of the self-review and follow along as we work through this tool. Please go to dodd.ohio.gov forward slash Ohio ISP, click on resources and documents, and you'll find the self-review tool. Part of the journey of learning is taking a moment to pause, reflect, evaluate, and make changes. The six essential elements review document allows you, your coworker, or your supervisor to review plans in a consistent way. Each element is described through indicators, and the self-review provides guidance for success, which are just some simple tips to help you in your reflection. On the self-review, you'll notice there are areas to document if each indicator is present and also add any notes or comments throughout your review. This month will be a bit different. We know that the best learning happens when we connect experience to a concept. For that reason, this video will be a simple introduction to the self-review and some call-outs for concepts that may be new to you. In order for you to really learn about this tool, you have to use it. We're asking you to try out the self-review with a plan you've been working on, or if you've been asked to review someone else's. We'll be looking at our own examples as well. Then bring your questions and any tips to the office hours later this month. We'll also plan to share the results of our own self-review and any changes we're making to the examples that we've been sharing on the website. Let's get started with the first element, respectful and empowering. Most of us can agree that this is the first thing we see when we're determining if a plan is person-centered. Remember though, we have five more elements to go, so language alone does not make a plan perfect. Here are a few things you should be on the lookout for when working through this element. Notice if there are phrases that are too wordy, contain a lot of jargon, or seem to take away a person's power. Also, imagine reading this plan for the first time. As someone who doesn't know the person, what do you think of them? Is it clear what their life looks like and how they want to be supported? When using this tool, it is likely you'll want to say that an indicator is kind of present, uh, not quite a solid yes or no. That's okay. Use this tool however it works best for you. Second of the six essential elements details the use of a trauma-informed approach. Trauma is a topic we cover in greater detail in part three of our Ohio ISP training and there are a number of trauma-related resources available through the DODD website. So please reference these materials for more information on trauma and resiliency factors. We all can acknowledge the effect that trauma may have on a person's life. The Ohio ISP should attempt to strike a balance of historical and present information necessary to understand how trauma affects the person today. We wanna respect a person's privacy and not use their past against them, while also providing sufficient supports to maintain safety and well-being. When reviewing the use of a trauma-informed approach, a person-centered Ohio ISP does the following. One, emphasizes strengths needed for resiliency. Two, shifts the thought process from what's wrong with the person to what happened to the person. In many ways, the plan sets the tone for how trauma is perceived by others. And three, builds a framework of trauma-informed and responsive supports with a focus on the person's current needs and desires. 
Moving along, essential element number three is about making connections throughout the plan. Our March 2022 gathering video included a presentation from Anna Jeffries of the Licking County Board of DD on how to write plans people will want to read. In that presentation, Anna focused on how writing a plan involves telling a person's story. In doing so, ideas are interwoven and the plan flows in a manner that paints a picture of that unique person. So, are there surprises in the Ohio ISP you're reviewing? Did you find something in assessment that you knew would be an outcome and then it wasn't there? Maybe you didn't learn about a risk until you were at the very end. There shouldn't be any surprises in person-centered planning. There should be clear connections throughout the assessment and plan. Also, with repetition, it's so easy to say the same thing over and over. During your review, are you finding areas where the repetition isn't necessary? In other words, something is being said again without adding any new information? Or maybe there are significant challenges that haven't been mentioned in enough detail. This should be some of the focus as you review this element. Element four, detailed and thorough. Do you see a unique person in this Ohio ISP? This element asks you to consider whether you see a complete picture of a person, including what matters most to them, what they want to accomplish, and services and supports that clearly address needs learned in the assessment. As you explore this element, be sure you clearly understand the core concept of person-centered practices, important to and important for. This is truly the part of a standardized Ohio ISP that should look different for each person. Information here should be specific, Spending time in assessment helps ensure these areas are detailed and thorough. Sometimes it's challenging to learn this information, especially if the person is unable to tell you. Be sure to talk to those that know the person best. We may not always get it right, but as long as we keep learning, trying to understand and updating, we're on the right track. Element five, clear outcomes and experiences. Do you see a clear path for someone to achieve something that matters to them? If so, you're doing great. We know outcomes are challenging, but consider how you accomplish goals in your own life. Does the Ohio ISP you're reviewing outline a plan that makes sense? Is it clear what the person wants and how they're going to get there? There are a lot of indicators to help you with this element. This section may take more time than others. A few questions worth calling out here. Is it clear that the outcome matters to the person and they'll actually be interested in working on it? Will it be easy for those who provide support to know what their role is and what is expected of them? Will the team be able to know when progress is happening? And is there a plan to check in so that updates can be made if something's not working right? Remember, we all have starts and stops and goals that we are trying to achieve. That's okay. The important part is that we keep learning, we try new approaches, and we continue to move forward. Element six, clear description of services and supports. As we wrap up with the sixth and final element, this one really brings it all together. All of the team's hard work should result in a clear identification of what a person needs in terms of services and supports. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that we don't have to be experts in everything or everything to everyone. You know that saying, it takes a village? Think about that when you consider whether a person's Ohio ISP focuses on utilizing a broad range of supports, such as technology, community resources, family, friends, and so on. Again, we don't have to be the expert. Don't know anything about gardening, but someone really wants to learn? Consider how you can develop services and supports that tap into someone else's knowledge about gardening. Go to your local gardening center. Also, when reviewing this section, 
keep in mind who the audience is. Certainly, every Ohio ISP is written with and for the person you're supporting, but it's also written specifically for the people who will be providing the services and supports directly. Keep this audience in mind when reviewing this section. Consider where there may be areas that require specific detail or where being broad is okay. Now that we've discussed the six essential elements and the indicators and guidance for self-review of a person-centered plan, we want to take a minute to discuss what the person-centered process and plan will ensure. First, we are helping people achieve their goals in the most integrated community setting. In this case, integration refers to a setting that is not specifically designed for people with disabilities and their staff. In addition, the person is being supported in the way that they want to be. That is, important twos are being addressed. And finally, the person is healthy, safe, and valued, which is covered in the important fours. As we close, just a few updates and reminders. As always, please check out our website for the latest resources and information. Find the self-review tool there and the six essential elements. Also, check out a video that has been posted specifically for providers. It's a great resource to share. Finally, we all want to ensure we're following the correct process when it comes to restrictive measures. A helpful guide was posted. Please review it so we're all familiar with the process, regardless of whether you currently serve someone who has restrictions in their plan. And a few reminders. Statewide office hours are on May 31st. QIDPs should join from 10 to 11 a.m., followed by SSAs from 11.30 to 12.30. Go to the website to find the links to join. Don't forget, we're all going to take on testing the self-review as our homework. So join the office hours on the 31st and be ready to share. And lastly, June's gathering will focus on the second part of the outcomes training. We'll cover writing outcomes, experiences, and services and supports. Also remember, these will be separate videos and office hours for QIDPs and SSAs. Thanks so much for joining us.